Welcome to Indoor Voices, everyone. This is the third episode. I'm Fiona Queen, your host, and with me today is a very, very special guest, uh, an exceptional concert pianist, artist, um, and very gifted teacher, Abraham Stockman. Abe, how are you doing this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure, and I love your studio. It's just such a beautiful room. I can imagine you sitting there and playing, you know, through this, this quarantine and making all of this beautiful music that you do so beautiful. Well, it's, well, it's my lifesaver to be able to practice. I, I, I'm sorry that many people don't have such a luxury or such an opportunity right. to, to do that, but it really gets me through all this terrible time. Uh, I want to start by asking you a little bit about your journey, like where you started and, and, and what brought you to America, to New York, and, and then Chicago eventually. Well, I started to play piano when I was six years old. I was born in Tel Aviv, Israel, actually in Petah Tikva, which is a suburb of Tel Aviv. My mother, when I was around 12, uh, I had already played for six years, and everybody said, I really should go to New York to continue my studies and go to Juilliard because Juilliard was very famous everywhere. And so my mother undertook the journey with me. By the way, that was just after Israel became Israel. It became Israel in May and I left in August. Wow, so what a time. I, yeah, it was a wonderful, exciting time. So I went to Brooklyn to stay with my cousin who was a baker. Um, and I lived with him in Brooklyn. He was an Orthodox Jew. I was not. So that was a bit of a problem uh, because I went to the prep division at Juilliard. I was on the scholarship and the prep division was on Saturdays, which is the Sabbath. Yes. He was very unhappy about it, but there was nothing much he could do. And uh, so I went to the prep division. I was there for many, many years. And then I went into the college division, the upper school, right from the prep division. And I studied with a very famous uh, musician, pianist, Edward Steuermann. He was a colleague of Schoenberg. He played of all of Schoenberg's music, uh, all the transcription that Schoenberg did for the piano. So um, he was my introduction to contemporary music, originally. When I was at the, at the Juilliard, I also became an opera coach. Don't ask me how. I just. <laughs> it doesn't somebody surprise said me at me, all. Somebody <laughs> said, Do you want to, can you coach opera? And I said, Sure. <laughs> so I became that. And, uh, and then I, of course, as a kid growing up in Manhattan, I did everything. I played in the band, I had my own band. I played Summers in the Catskills. I accompanied everyone but monkeys. I never accompanied monkeys, but I accompanied singers and dancers and Broadway stars and classical music. And I did everything. And then, of course, I accompanied at Juilliard too, the strings. I worked with uh, the Persinger, mm -hmm. Arthur DeLay, uh, just about everyone, every instrument. It's an incredible conversation. Yeah, and so I, I gathered, you see, I gathered enormous amount of music. That's how I happen to, to know all kinds of music. And it really has done me really very well in my older years as far as improvisation. And then, I, and then after that, um, I came to Chicago because at that time, um, I had a friend here, Raymond Zapko, who is a wonderful composer, son Misha, who teaches at the academy. Right. Um, Raymond said to me, you know, why don't you come to Chicago? Um, and so I said, fine. And then I came and I had no work. So I went to play in the bars. And I played from nine in the evening to six in the morning oh. on the Gold Coast. I did that bit with all kinds of interesting people, sure. euphemistically. Some of them were drunk, some of them were very nice. But again, it was an experience. It was a wonderful experience. And then after that, Raymond, who at that time was teaching at Roosevelt, 
University and the Chicago Musical College said, you know, they have, there's an opening for, at that time it was called Artist in Residence. I said, why don't you audition for that? And so I did and I was accepted. So then I left the bars and I taught at the, at the um, Chicago Musical Institute for about four years. And, um, oh, and all that time I was married to another lady to the different from the one that I'm married to now. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> no, no, we won't. <laughs> but that was also a very interesting part of my life. Anyway, uh, when I was uh, teaching at uh, Roosevelt, Lean, who is my wife, who was teaching at the Music Institute, came to study with me at the behest of Emilio de Rosario, who was then teaching. And because she asked when she came from the Philippines, she said, who should I study with? And he said, of course, Stockman. So she didn't take his word for it. She came to hear me perform to give a concert. And I remember I played an old Schubert program. And after the program, she said, yeah, I guess I'll study with him. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> <laughs> and she started to study with me and she was a wonderful pianist. She's a wonderful pianist. And, um, and then we became great friends. And then after she got her master's, um, after she got her master's, we became uh, more closely involved, more personally involved. And I finally asked her to marry me after I divorced the other lady, of course. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's how I, and then she was already teaching at the musical, at, at the, uh, Chicago uh, Music uh, Institute. And then at one point, Cal Novak was then the president and he knew of me, knew who I was. And she said, and he said, you know, he said, what about Abe? She, he said, what about his teaching here? She said, well, he's, let me ask him. And so and the rest is history. And I, of course, accepted, he was very gracious and, well, the Music Institute of Chicago has been extremely fortunate to, to have you as a member of, of the faculty. And I think your legacy, uh, so deep how it runs through your founding of music for a while at the Institute, which when I first came on, you were um, still programming and that developed into the Four Score Festival. And uh, your footprint in Chicago in terms of being a founding member of the, of the contemporary music scene here um, is, is so, such a strong and lasting influence on so many musicians in, in this city and I have no doubt throughout the country. So. Well, I was also, while I was here, I played with, with Shapey's group, right. the British players, for nine years. <laughs> I played with them. So, I mean, I had a lot of contemporary music experience all my adult life and that's, and I still do. How is that? I mean, I'm, a lot of people might not know uh, how gifted you are at improvisation. I know that you teach it also at the Music Institute, but I've, I've been fortunate to have presented you in concert, a full concert of uh, improvising and uh, involving, engaging with the audience. Um, that's obviously something that you really enjoy. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I've always played by ear as a child. I always love to pick up I have a very good ear and perfect pitch, so I picked up everything. And I would make arrangements as a kid, you know, how kids do. Nobody at that time forbade, forbade me for playing those things because this was in Israel and, and I, everything was fine. And that developed over the years as I learned more and more music, you see. I, I learned what the styles are, how is Beethoven different from Bach, and how is Bach different from Chopin or Copeland? And so I amass all this knowledge, plus all the music that I've been playing as a kid trying to earn a living. So it all came together, you see. Yeah. So by the time I went to Roosevelt University, I was already improvising really quite well. And I've always loved doing it. It's something that doing, yeah. I, I love doing it, first of all, it makes people laugh. I think it, it gives them a chance to be part of 
the playing, just yeah. not just a passive audience. Yeah. I love them, I ask them to offer tunes, and then I improvise in whatever style they ask me to. And, uh, and so I've made it now as part of my regular program. I always do them as encores yeah. or just do improvisations. And I love teaching improvisations at the academy uh, where Jim Senepan asked me to do that. Um, and I've had wonderful classes. They're small and the kids are great. And it doesn't matter, most of them have never improvised because, you know, most, most kids just read music yes. or not to, not to improvise. Right. They frowned upon. Right. And I was telling them, no, it's fine. <laughs> And I was always amused by the parents. They would say, what is all that noise you're making? You're not practicing. <laughs> Tell them that is practicing. Well, do you mind? Why don't we have a little fun with that uh, right now, if you don't mind? I'm, I'm going to uh, pick a, a song and then a composer. And if, if you wouldn't mind showing people just how wonderfully gifted you are at this, I think we could have a lot of fun. Um, OK, let me get up. Let's see, I think. We're on hiatus next week because of the July 4th weekend, so it might be nice to do something uh, a little bit uh, native. So why don't we do, um, I'm gonna ask you to do America the Beautiful in the style of um, America, one of America's greatest composers, Aaron. That would be great. I can just hear all the applause that I can't give you behind me, crowd standing up, because that was really great, Abe. What a, what a beautiful tribute to a, a festive weekend at a, at a time when we, we need so much to celebrate things. So. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. That was fun. Come on back. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, okay. um, your artwork. Uh, I've known you for so many years, and again, I've had the pleasure of exhibiting some of your artwork at the Music Institute in conjunction with some of these beautiful recitals that you do. Um, and I remember being in your in your lovely home now and there's a 
your artwork is all uh, displayed in, in your studio, which I think is a lovely connection to um, playing, playing music at the piano, but being surrounded by these other uh, elements that clearly bring you joy. So let's take a look at that uh, wall. It's just beautiful and uh, I really can't wait till we can get back to the Music Institute and into our spaces so that, uh, that we can present another one of these exhibits. I know it was right at the, at the edge of, of us going into quarantine that you were actually scheduled uh, to give a recital and present the work. So it's lovely to be able to at least introduce everybody to your work here today. So you mentioned to me earlier that um, you were in quarantine, were doing some painting and artwork on the porch. Um, explain how it's felt and, uh, to do that, to have your artwork outside and at home like this. Well, it was very strange because first of all, I didn't have my oils. They were in the studio where I work in Evanston. So I had to resort with what I had, which were crayons. Now I've never worked with crayons and I thought, well, this is a good time to find out. And so I sat, would sit in my porch. It's a lovely little area, very sunny with plants. And I started to sketch. I started to do all kinds of little things of, that were very something from just my imagination. And then finally I did one of Arlene um, because I, I, I want to paint another I have many portraits of her. She's my best subject. Oh, I don't blame you. And on that yeah. note, I would love her to just come in and say hello uh, right now. To Arlene, who also, of course, is a faculty member at the Music Institute of Chicago, but the two of you are just one of the most lovely, so such good friends of mine, but such a beautiful couple together. And it's just so wonderful to see you together here today. Hi, Fiona, how are you? I'm, I'm doing as well as we all, you know, as well as can be expected and... Um, you look good though, you look good. You look amazing. <laughs> my hair is you know, practically down to my ankle right now, but uh, you both look so wonderful. So, Thank you. Uh -huh. It's really been very helpful to have my family with me. David lives with us now just for a while and it's been wonderful to have him with us. It's, it's really a great family is so important. Pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Our daughter now lives in, in uh, North Carolina. So we, we FaceTime with her and with my grandson, Jacob Hello. and her husband, Josh. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think we should take a look. I, I made a little montage of uh, some of the paintings you've done from the porch that also include that portrait you referenced of Arlene. Let's, let's take a look at these. Some of your earlier work though, um, and again, these beautiful portraits of your family. Uh, there are some examples you've sent, one of Jacob, Arlene with uh, Alex as a baby, David, um, Alex and Josh in Thailand. Um, these are just beautiful um, and very, it's clear just the love that you have for your family. Um, tell us a little bit about how that feels to be able to do something so personal like that. Well, you know, I really started to paint very late in my life. I think I was about 60, it was my 65th birthday. And my son, David, who always tries to put a dynamite stick under me, said to me, Dad, what else do you enjoy doing? And I said, well, I love to play. I mean, that's my life. That's what I am. And he says, yeah, I know, but do you like other things? And I said, well, I love painting the sculpture. And he says to me, at that time, why don't you learn how to paint? I said, David, I'm 65 years old. So what? It doesn't matter. Look at Grandma Moses. So you'll be Grandma Stockman. <laughs> so, so anyway, I, 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 I went and took some lessons and I absolutely loved it immediately. Mm -hmm. And I'm working in a studio 
with a wonderful teacher called uh, painter Leslie Hirschfield is her name, and other students. And, uh, and I've been there since painting. And, uh, do you have a favorite medium when you... When you... I love oils. Mm -hmm. I, I did, I've done pastels in the beginning. I did chalk and pastels, which I loved. But I always wanted to paint in oils. That was my, my, my dream. And so now I've been doing that and I just love it. I love oils. I've not done any watercolors yet. Mm -hmm. That'll come, I'm sure. Well, I, I, I want everybody to see uh, this painting you did of your beautiful dog, Charlie. This is truly one of my favorite paintings of, of all the artwork in the world uh, and just the way that you captured what was clearly on the inside and of uh, this, this beautiful dog. So let's take a look at Charlie. So, we know that you said you have you have another painting. Another Charlie. Yeah, a different thing. <laughs> yes, another Charlie. I have a very, my oldest friend, Charlie, Charles Gerber, who is an actor who lives in New York. He's a wonderful actor. Um, and I recently painted him. And I thought we'll have the two Charlies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the Look at another Charlie here. Yes. <laughs> I really admire that painting because it, you know, the progression of your work, as I've seen from your early pieces, uh, really shows your development um, in your technique and in your your view of your subject. So, wonderful. well, I'm much more comfortable now. I mean, I'm learning. I, I consider myself still a very avid student. What I what I don't know about painting would take thirty volumes. I mean, I'm learning and learning, but there's so much to it, as you know, in any art form. I just feel lucky that I'm able to do it. I have, the, and that gives me a lot of pleasure. That's really what, why I do it. Uh, well, also, when we talked uh, again a little bit earlier, um, and I'm, I wanted you to play a little bit more today, you um, said that you wanted to perform a piece by Hinastera. Yeah, yeah, it's a piece that's uh, that I, very close to me right now. It's, it's one of the Argentinian dances that he wrote. It's called uh, A Dance of the Funky Girl. <laughs> of course, it doesn't sound anything like the title. But the reason I chose it is because it's very reminiscent of the times that we live now, especially all the people that have died. And I think that this is in my way, a tribute to that. And also, just last week, Arlene's niece, who, one of her nieces who lives in, in uh, lived in uh, Cali, Colombia, died from the COVID. You mentioned that to me, and I think my heart and um, all of us as a community goes out to you and Arlene, uh, the, the losses incomparable. I just, I'm very sorry to hear about that. Yeah, and I also, uh, I wanted before I play to uh, give my gratitude to MIC for having employed me for all these years and being part of the school and being able to do all the things that I've done in the school. They've really been very generous. It's a wonderful place, and uh, as I mentioned, you're you're a national treasure and, and a treasure to all of us at the institute. Thank you, Abe. Thank you. Well, I'll go and play the piece then. Thank you. 
Thank you, Abe. That was uh, so moving and so beautiful. What a lovely tribute. Thank you. Um, I, I, I think that the fact that so many people have died during this time without any mourning, really, most of the time they die alone, which to me is the saddest thing that can possibly happen. I mean, to die is, is bad enough. Every life is precious, and the fact that so many people of all ages have just died like this is, I just felt the peace is a fitting piece for, for this Great kind of thing at this time. And, and I'm glad to have played it. Uh, every life is precious, and you and Arlene, you know, stay well and continue to uh, project music and, and your lovely spirit out there to comfort uh, so many. And thank people. you for having, thank you for having this program. I think it's at this time, especially at this time, it's good for the world to know that people still act and 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 uh, function and produce and are creative, and life goes on no matter what. Life always goes on. Well, I look forward to the day that I can see you in person again and give you a big hug and go out and enjoy a nice meal together and uh, just start making music again in person. So thank you so much for, for being my guest today, Abe, and um, my, my love to you and Arlene. Thank you.